Over the past decade, I've shared a lot of my adventures with all of you, all related to how I capture images with my camera. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do some of the work with my computer on the back end of the process. For software, I'll be using Lightroom, Luminar Neo, and Photoshop to show you how I take these images from raw to finished. We'll be looking at three different examples. Image number one is one that I took in dappled or shaded light where I needed to increase the exposure on the two subjects, the dog and a model, in the image. Image number two, I actually removed a light from the entire composition because it was in the way. And so I got rid of it and I'm gonna show you how I did it. And in image number three, I was using a smoke machine and the fog was overexposed. So I needed to fix that. And here I'm gonna show you how I did it using the remove tool. All right, all right, all right. Let's get to the editing. For this image, we're gonna be using Lightroom and Luminar Neo. When I'm dealing with an image where there's a lot of background light and I need to darken the exposure, what I'll do is take the overall exposure down and then use a selective brush on the subjects of the image to increase their exposure. So this is a shoot that I did at an estate uh, with the Innova Pro 3, really cool shoot, love how it came out, but I wanted to darken the background and increase the exposure and I used the AI inside of Lightroom to select them and then where AI didn't do it exactly the way that I wanted it to, I did a local brush, selected it on my own to make it look great. After Lightroom, the next step of my process is to bring it up into Luminar Neo. And this is really where I finish an image. I do a lot of my toning, my color grading is pretty much all done in Luminar Neo. I'll also do a lot of my local adjustments because the AI inside of Luminar Neo enables me to do facial touch-ups, uh, it finds the eyes for me, the mouth for me, you can manipulate the body. You can just do so many things with the AI in there. It really helps to make the process a lot more efficient. So this is the normal process that I go through. Just for redundancy sake, I'm not gonna show you this same process in the next two images. I'm gonna speed through the normal process and get to the specialized parts of the other ones, which would be removing the light and then fixing the fog in the, in the following two images. All right, for image number two, I'm going to show you removing the Innova Pro 3 from the shots. I hate removing this, I hate doing it, but sometimes it's necessary. So let's get to it. When I was taking this image, it was important to note that I looked at the background behind the model. Given that the building has repeating patterns on the right and left side, I knew I'd be able to sample the right side, copy and paste it over to the left. If you change the mask to darken, it helps you to see what you're doing when you are trying to align that sample area onto the area that you're trying to cover up. Then the other thing that's important is change it back to normal. And before you merge any layers or do anything like that, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you take a soft brush and just go down the edges to make sure that it looks appropriate and that there's nothing sticking out and it doesn't look bad. Then what you do is you just use cloning or the remove tool to get rid of the rest. And there's the before and after. Makes a big difference. Okay, for this last example, we are going to use the remove tool and we're gonna use it for two different things. One, we're gonna be using it for removing a typical item that you would remove, which is the smoke ninja laying on the ground. And then the other thing that we're going to do is use it to manipulate the fog. And that's a really cool technique that I have found. If you have a model or a subject and there's a light that's bright behind them and it's shining through the dress and it's overexposing a portion of the dress or it's overexposing a portion of the fog, or if there's another element behind them that's overexposed, using that remove tool and kind of smudging it in there really does a really cool trick to fix it. All you do is take that remove tool, sample that area, and just massage it a little bit until it looks just right. And it really does a great job. The lighting used for the images used in this video was with the Innova Pro 3 by Rotolite. It's an awesome light, and if you have more questions about it, you can go to rotolite.com slash kickstarter. And if you're looking for any of the other rotolites, you can go to rotolite.com slash Jason offers. Password is Jason Lanier. Big discounts there. So hit it up. If you like this video, please let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. I do read them and uh, I'm very curious because I'm making these videos to help people to live their photography dreams. And if you'd like to know more about how I edit and do this with me online, Go to patreon.com slash Jason Lanier Photography. I critique your images monthly 
and you can follow along as I'm editing in real time following my laptop, my computer, my screen while I edit. So go to patreon.com slash photography. So until next time, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams, find the right gear that works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.